Most believe the victory in Mosul and the current offensive against ISIS in Raqqa signals the end of the Islamic State Caliphate. But what happens next is the major question facing the Middle East. You have so many different actors, both at the state and substate at level, that are working in these very amorphous coalitions and then, uh, you know, against one another, with one another, that this is a very, very dangerous place. I mean, this becomes a tinderbox. Carolyn Glick says a wide range of actors, including Syria, Russia, the U.S., Turkey, the Kurds, Sunni Islamist groups, Hezbollah and Iran, all make up that volatile mix. You got a lot of people with weapons. You got a lot of fighting going on in a small territorial unit and its implications both for great power uh, relations and of course for cause the ability to cause massive instability in neighboring countries like Jordan, like you mentioned Israel, and of course Iraq is sort of part of the same theater, are, are just almost mind boggling. From this vantage point on the Golan Heights, you can see that instability in action. A number of groups control Syria along Israel's border, including rebel forces and even ISIS. But the groups that concern Israel the most are the ones connected to Iran. Not so far from here, we have thousands of Shiites, Iranian-backed militias that are fighting in Syria. Avi Melamed says the West needs to know the war in Syria stretches beyond its borders. The war in Syria is way beyond the civil war. Actually, what we see right now in Syria is a huge stage of a huge regional power struggle, uh, roughly speaking, between two, two major forces. One are the Iranians and their backed militias on the one hand, and the other are the Arab Sunnis. Glick warns Syria is flooded with Iranian troops. The Syrian military today is Iranian, Hezbollah is Iranian, of course, Iran is Iranian, and they have, they have an unlimited number of troops that they can bring in at will, and they are bringing into Syria from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, and it's basically a bottomless well of personnel that Iran can bring over and use as cat and fodder for its hegemonic aims in the Middle East. Melamed warns Iran is trying to create a land bridge to Lebanon on the Mediterranean, that would pose a great danger to Israel. We have to remember that the Iranian regime vows the elimination of the state of Israel. Trying to launch a military front against Israel in the Golan Heights will, uh, could result in a massive eruption because Israel would not stand for that, and rightly so. He says in order to better understand today's Middle East, you must go back in history to President Obama. Obama's administration is definitely responsible for what I call a growing whirlpool of violence. The major reason for that is that Obama's administration, for whatever the reasons are, lined up with the Iranians, enabling the Iranians to expand their influence violently and proactively in different arenas in the region. Now Iran's proxy Hezbollah poses an unprecedented threat to Israel. They're in control of Lebanon and openly threatening war with Israel. And not only are there, are their armaments sophisticated uh, to a degree that we've never seen before in the hands of terrorists that are controlled by a terror regime, but their men, their men under arms, their soldiers are battle-hardened, gruesome, brutal warriors who have been in the battlefield in Syria for the past six years. Melamed believes the danger is greater now than when all of the Middle East ganged up on Israel in the 1967 Six-Day War. It's much greater. Look, we are looking today at reality where you have dozens of thousands of Shiite militants that are already operating in Syria, massively uh, armed, financed, and guided by the Iranians. The Iranians are, the same way they took over Lebanon in a remote control using the Hezbollah, the Iranians are envisioning a similar future to Syria. That could lead to a confrontation with global implications. And in Israeli signals, and the Israeli signals are going to be very powerful because Israel is determined not to allow the Iranians to make the Golan Heights a stage of war. The ramifications of the potential development that I was now portraying of that uh, reality on the ground, the ramifications are not only local. They are not only regional, they are exceeding the regional level, they could be global. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, the Golan Heights, Israel.